Development and Regulation Committee meeting uh, held, as you can see, in Committee Room 1. Before I open the formal part of the meeting, I have a few housekeeping points that I need to read out. This room uh, does have automatic cameras and sound tracking with microphones in the ceiling. Given this, I would remind members of a couple of things. Please continue to speak clearly and try not to whisper. Um, please keep other sounds to a minimum. Um, whispering, shuffling of papers and typing loud in the keypad uh, will bring the camera onto you and will record um, what you're doing. Please also bear in mind that the ceiling microphone are sensitive and may pick up conversation in the room, including informal remarks. And finally, please refrain from using mobile phone, as when the camera is zoomed, it will not only capture the speaker, but, only, uh, but also those sitting next to them as well. Uh, last two points are particularly important, as we are live streaming the meeting on YouTube, and the recording of, the, of this will be available at any time on that channel. We are not expecting uh, a fire drill this morning, so if the alarm should sound, please follow officers out the doors to the side of the room and leave the building by the nearest fire exit, which will be down the stairs in the foyer into Duke Street, where you'll be, then make your way to the location assembly uh, in the grounds of the cathedral opposite. Thank you very much indeed. Right, we go to uh, our agenda today. Uh, first item is uh, membership, apologies. Substitutions and declaration of interest. Emma. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies have been received from Councillor Fleming, for whom Councillor Sheldon is substituting, and from Councillor Garnet, for whom Councillor Grundy is substituting. Councillor Step Day. Uh, yes, I need to clear as uh, on item 5.1, um, it refers to the Barling tip. It's in my county division, it's in my ward, and I'm also a member of the parish council. Okay, and so you've been involved in some of the uh, stuff as we know there. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Noted. Um, no other declaration of interest. Thank you. Uh, minutes, agenda item two. Can I sign them as a true record? These relate to the uh, November meeting as uh, the December have been uh, cancelled the last minutes. Moved. Thank you. Agenda item three public speakers. Uh, do we have any public speakers today, Emma? Thank you, Chairman. For item 4.1, land at Coleman's Farm Quarry, we have Mr Oliver Bryce speaking on behalf of the applicant for the application. Thank you very much indeed. And we go to agenda item 4, mineral and waste, land at Coleman's Farm Quarry, the old Braxton Lane, Rivenall. Uh, it's in the hands of uh, Mr Terry Burns. Over to you, Terry. Can I just get this Thank you, Chair. That one. So, a fairly short report today, guys. I've uh, <laughs> <laughs> chapters for you just to uh, make reading a lot more. So, the first chapter, War and Peace, is it? <laughs> for that one. So, these are three reports in one on this one, and we'll go through the reasons for that later on. But they're interrelated. Page one, page 15 of the agenda sets up what the three applications are. We have a proposed Western extension to Coleman's Farm Quarry, uh, which is an extant one, paired up with a variation of condition application to vary the mother permission under which the Coleman's Farm Quarry works to allow dovetailing of the Western extension were to be granted approval. And then the third application, which is a variation of condition, again, of the mother permission, and that seeks to change a number of issues and introduce recycling um, revised restoration plan and some other bits which we'll go through in, um, in the report. So the applications were submitted in uh, right now in April April of 20, 2018. So the first one, the Western Extension, came in in early April. The second one came in in late April, and the third one, ESS 98, came in in November. They've morphed into basically one report as we've gone through the process. It's taken a lot of uh, time with various technical appraisals having been carried out and discussions between the various technical parties. And that's one of the reasons why, one, the reason was to bring these reports to committee as a one package so you guys could actually see what was taking place on the site. So if you go into it, the Coleman's Farm 
originally started out in the Minerals Local Plan as an allocation site. That was the original boundary, which is up in red on the plan, known as A46. And one or two of the queries, and I'll talk to the presentation as much as I can to reduce going through the report, but I'll come back to the report later on. So Coleman's Farm came in in 2014, and it was subsequently granted approval and then subject to legal agreements, and the site began operations over a 17-year period in February 2017. So the red line boundary, as you can see, was the allocation boundary. Where we are today, the black on black boundary on the plan is the current extant quarry boundary, and the red area shown on the plan is the Western Extension proposal. Now, the reason for putting that one up on the screen, to pick up on one or two of the queries in the report, <coughs> When the allocations are made in the local plans, yes, boundaries do change as they go through the planning process. So an allocation is not a grant of planning permission, it's just suitable for future mineral extraction, and then an application will come in and get tested through the process. So there's a comparison on the screen there. On the left is the allocation boundary, and as you can see, the enlarged boundary on the right is what actually became the approved extant site onto that, and that, as I said, started in 2017. The quarry actually works to a clockwise direction with phasing. You can see my mouse there. We have on phase one, which has now been worked out. Phase two, phase three has been worked out. Phase four, where they're currently just finishing off, ready to go into phase five. The site would then work around I'll come into more detail later on. There's a bridleway footpath along the southern boundary, which would be diverted in future operational periods. The quarry plant area is located in this hatched area to the left. The lagoons, <coughs> etc., just below. Little Braxted Lane runs down the left-hand side where the primary access to the quarry is. And there's a secondary access at this point onto Braxted Road where vehicles can go off and do local deliveries. The A12 is situated to the north and the Blackwater River running just to the south on that. Proposed approved restoration plan is to restore a lot back to priority habitat. As you can see, that's the existing reservoir. They will be proposed to have one large lake, a secondary lake there, lowland arable, lowland meadows, arable land around the side. There's a brook, which we'll pick up on later on, called Burley Brook, which runs down through the site on the western half. And a little lake area up in the north area near Riven Hall. This is a recent aerial shot of the site, just to get your bearings. There's the A12 to the north. Nice little access road in off Little Braxford Lane, leads into the quarry processing plant, stockpiling area, the lagoons, phase one, which has been worked, as you can see, phase two and three worked, and on this one, a few, um, few months at date, that's the phase four working. Points to note for later on, and we'll just take this as a reference point when we do an overlay, that bend in footpath will be a reference point I'll pick up on afterwards as I will with these three blocks of factories to the north, with the middle one. That will denote when we have an overlay where the processing plant is, just to give you eyes up. So along comes the proposal for the A12 road alignment process. With them, the quarry is located in there. That's the existing reservoir. The road would then run a suddenly route running parallel to the existing A12 cut behind Riven Hall and come up past the fire and rescue location. That's just to give a bearing, so ignore that at the moment. I'll come back to that later on. So, with an overlay of what the road alignment, if it went ahead, would look like on the quarry. Get our bearings, there's the footpath, and there's the, the bump in the footpath, and there's the three factory blocks. So the middle factory block dropped down, so where my cursor is, is really where the existing processing plant is located. So as you can see, if the A12 goes ahead, it's going to go straight through the processing plant and it will run along 
basically where phases one, two, and three of the worked out void are. There they are. I'll just give you an overview. So if I run my cursor, that is near enough following the line of where the A12 realignment would go onto that one. The other side this is just the other half of the quarry. Looking on to Braxton Road, there's the existing reservoir. Quarry boundary is in here with the Braxton Road going down. And that just shows the line and proposals for the A12 realignment to run through with an overbridge, I believe, for Braxton Road going over the new A12, linking into a roundabout to get onto the old A12, north and south, and then an offshoot to go up through Ribbon Hall onto that. That's just the back end of the quarry, in a sense. The existing secondary access for the quarry, which is just down off the road, uh, off the picture, would remain the same in that sense. Um, just as a point of interest there. So the primary access route out onto Little Braxted Lane, under the new proposal, there will be a new road linking from the quarry and Little Braxted Lane all the way up onto a roundabout, which will then give them ac or people access west, over the A12, onto the roundabout, giving you access east. So the quarry, under this proposal, and properties further south, on Little Braxford Lane, would have a dedicated route near enough, straight out onto the A12 dual carriageway. There's my little annotation, with, across on the Google map, with a red line, which is near enough the centre line of any realignment of the road, just to give you a flavour of the month there. And secondary access, you can just see, trundling off on the left-hand side of the, the picture, comes out onto Braxted Lane, which is here. And there's a nice little picture showing the link, the primary access onto Little Braxted Lane at the moment, which is a short run up to the slip road and then onto the existing A12 onto those. The western extension area piece of land is this little field here, including stockpiling, and there is stockpiling in this area here. So it straddles the existing quarry boundary, and it's constrained with the A12 to the north and everywhere else by the existing quarry itself. Under these proposals, which is coming forward before the committee, the proposals would change the phase in. So as we had phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. If pr approval was granted for the Western Extension, they would do five, six, and seven in the Western Extension, eight parallel to the road line, and then come back on track to carry out the existing quarry phase in, ultimately. Restoration under these proposals, these pictures I'll just show, these are two pictures which were included as part of the community engagement leaflet that the company undertook with the locals and the parishes, just to give options for what the restoration could potentially look like. I've just put them up there because they were mentioned in the report. But the one that's going through in the committee is this one. So there's the existing reservoir, two lakes, a bit more <coughs> readable with islands and a bit more furniture <coughs> in the the outline, lowland meadows, agricultural land, and an area outside of the quarry, but still within the applicant's ownership, as offsetting for any disturbed priority habitats which might have been lost as a result of reduced lake areas, etc. These discussions in the report have all been well thrashed out with our county ecologists and county landscape people onto that. Coming forward. So there's just a comparison of the approved and the proposed. To me, yeah, a huge lake like that is probably looking dead. It doesn't look much. It's a lot nicer to have more secluded ones for the birds and the wildlife to actually live. This is probably more conducive, should I say, to fishing later on, but no. So if we can, my preference, it's a lot, it looks a lot better in hindsight on that, but hey-ho. Moving a bit on, this is just a blow up of the Western Extension boundary with the top or graphical details underneath, just so you can see. Existing field, but a lot of the land is already occupied by stockpiling within the extant quarry. So the only fresh bit, if we were to talk about a fresh bit, would be that particular field there. And there we are, there's an aerial shot just to show you. Looking 
north down to south, that's the Western Extension Field. So it includes that area. And if you draw a line across here, there's stockpiles already in this area. So it's only a small piece of land. As I said in the report, why it wasn't included at the time when the application was originally proposed as part of the allocation, we don't know. But as you can see from the approved site boundary, that site boundary changed anyway from the allocation boundary. So swings and roundabouts. There is mention in the committee report as well of Burley Brook, which I mentioned on the western half of the quarry. Uh, there was discussion about it being too channelised. So in discussion, with landscape and ecology, yeah, they've come up with a more sinewy, natural looking route, which would be reinstated. However, my last slide, so you don't fall asleep, would be the footprint of the road line would actually go straight over Burley Brook anyway, so it probably ended up culverted. So just keep that, keep that in mind. So I'll just go back to that. <coughs> And I'll just take you through the report then, guys, just to basically thrash out what I've already said in the PowerPoint. So the committee report, as we go through, I mentioned the original quarry, 17 years, 2.2 million tons of sand and gravel, and it began in 2017. It has a, um, an accompanying legal agreement, which covers various bits, including there was a lot of road improvement works on Little Braxid Lane and the junction works in this neck of the world. So they've been maintained and continued. There's been the history of the site as it's developed, and that's gone through in the report, page 18, 19. Yes, one of the big issues on the site, as you can probably see, is going to be traffic, and we'll come on to that issue in a few moments. So the Western Extension is for 265,000 tonnes. Not a lot, but we've argued in the report that it's avoiding sterilisation within the minerals local plan parameters. If the, if the road line goes ahead, um, no, it will be a genuine sterilisation issue that we can pick up on. When the applications originally came in, and Council, uh, District Councillor Abbott and Braintree Council as well have picked up, at the time, the road hadn't developed to what it is at present. <coughs> the DCO has been put in, and there's an examination preparation beginning at the moment by the Secretary of State. I was approached... You, um, this week, with a question from the Secretary of State on where this report was coming. So they might be tuning in from pins at the moment, to give them a wave if they are. So it's, it's a way, and they are picking up on that. So the hearing, which I believe will be update on that one, which is in York. There we are. So that is the latest for <coughs> the hearing. So they're doing their. Uh, preparation at the moment through to February, specific hearing penciled in for March, April. Hearings then taking place June, July, end of examination July, and that, then that will obviously await the Secretary of State's decision on the road line. So that's in your PowerPoint, and that's the latest we have at the present moment. So it's moved since the applications were submitted. So it's a lot of the comments made by the various consultees, objectors, have in a sense been overtaken by events. So this is now ratcheted up and there's a bit more in place. So I've gone through the application details. I've gone through the policies from page 43 onwards, a number of our local plans and the Braintree District Plan, which is an up-to-date one, adopted July 2022, are relevant. And we've gone through those. The consultees I've set out from page 49 onwards, Braintree have their own appendix at the back, they're special, so you can have a quick read of that and just see how they stand. Those. Highways England, yeah. their comments there. Highways England have been involved quite a bit with the applicants and are in discussion. They are aware of this application, they've commented on it, they've got no objections. And I'll come on to that later in terms of timescales and whether it's going to be met or not. But they've not raised any objections. They are fully aware. County noise consultants and county air quality consultants have gone into it in great detail. And one of the reasons this report has been held up is because discussions with those consultees and the applicant has taken a bit of time. But they're satisfied now, subject to various recommendations and conditions onto that. Representations are on page 60. 
We've had a number of letters come in. Most of them are from district councillors. As you know, I've set out Councillor James Abbott's comments in detail, and some of them, as I said, uh, are superseded. And the report itself has been presented in such a way that, yes, the applicant relied on the A12 as being the reasoning behind these applications. I've tried to separate that in the report. So we've looked at it both. If the A12 goes ahead, and if the A12 isn't there, do they actually stand on their merits? And that's the way the report has been balanced. So the appraisal on page 63 has gone into quite a bit of detail. And as you'll see on page 63, 64, I've done A to I, which are the appraisal sections. The appropriateness, the implications with the county land bank, the A12 road implications, the infilling, retention of the recycling facilities and continued recycling, and the environmental side, noise, dust, air quality, landscape and ecology. It's been found as we go through that the Western Extension, standing on its own, would meet our policies, particularly S6, which is the sand and gravel one. It would meet, meet our waste policies as well, because even though <coughs> filling of the, of the voids, not only the Western Extension, but the other phases, two, three, and eight, would in a sense be classified as landfill under that condition. And I've gone through that report in detail and gone through the sub-criteria, finding that it is acceptable in all senses of the word. In terms of our land bank, we are currently at 8.15 uh, years, compared to 2021 when it was 7.61. We're supposed to keep a land bank above seven. Eight is not major. Some authorities are well above that. Uh, it's not considerably above seven. So it's within the fluctuations that we have in terms of the minerals market. That can go up, it can go down tomorrow as well. So I've gone through policy S6, which is our important one on sand and gravel, on page 67 <coughs> through 69, so quite a bit of detail under the various criteria. Does the Western Extension stand up? In terms of its boundaries, which a number of people were concerned about, would the Western Extension be, be the precursor to future extension applications? Well, as you've seen, it hits the road to the north and north, south and east, sorry, east, south and west, it's an existing quarry. So if this one got approval, it would be the last bit of remaining mineral within that land holding. And if the road goes ahead, it will be run straight over. Even if it doesn't go ahead, there are grounds in the report for supporting it as standalone removal of the mineral itself. So putting the mineral to one side, yes, there will be the infilling implications, not only for the Western Extension, but also for the further phases which are along the road line. So the application for the Western Extension, 3621, is for that field. 9821, which asks, asks for revisions to the restoration plan and recycling, would see the infilling of these voids and the narrow phase eight along the potential road line to allow a suitable at-grade um, reconstruction for the road if it went ahead. So we've got to look at it in terms of the Western Extension infilling, because that could stand alone as a separate application. I've mentioned that it's a tight time scale. So when this application was put in in 2017, it was anticipated that they would have sufficient time to get through the site. You've seen the current, the application has been delayed as has the DCO process. And you've seen the current dates which are up on the screen. If we got approval, then yes, the planning permission would be issued and subject to getting themselves the legal agreement sorted out. They will be on with working that and getting the mineral out through the existing quarry, <coughs> using the existing access roads. If the A12 went ahead, there would be arrangements with uh, National England, it's Highways England. National England would uh, take on board that issue and they would maintain a primary access within the road line for the quarry operators. So they wouldn't be diverted through uh, any other roads. There would be a link through, and that's what we understand. So if highways, National, uh, National England came along and the quarry was only partly worked or getting towards fully worked, the agreement about them taking on the land would be with them and the landowners. There are options in the report, as far as I'm aware, of potential overdig within the quarry boundary to achieve some backfilling fairly quickly. 
or potentially material could come from within the road line to backfill that area. But that would ultimately be a contractual issue with national highways and the operators. What we're looking at is the Western Extension being approved or not, and for it to be one for minerals. <coughs> Likewise, with the infilling, infilling, and a number of people have picked up on uh, where's the material going to come from. Waste, as you know from your presentations, which I've given you in the past, is like any other commercial commodity. <coughs> That waste is already on the system somewhere. It just means it's probably not going into this particular site or a closed site. It could well be. They would be looking to acquire some of that, and that probably be down to commercial aspects of pricing, etc. So the HDVs and the material available for infilling all of our mineral voids is already in existence. What they're proposing is some of it comes here. The local area generates material. So rather than have their material trundling off down the county or north, if there's a local area, fits our policy, sustainability, close by, as on your doorstep, why not? It cuts down on vapour miles, cuts down on carbon, sustainable climate change, and it's more acceptable for environmental terms as well. So infilling under the policy as it stands, whether it's the road line or under our mineral local plan policies, is considered acceptable. There's no environmental issues which can cannot be overcome. The quarry is already operating under extant conditions. These proposals would fit within that and just be an extension of the current quarry conditions. Once the vehicles go onto the public highway, it's like anything else. Um, it's down to, you know, it's outside of planning control in that sense. So assuming that the Western extension is acceptable in mineral terms and in fill-in terms, time scales, approval today, got their legal agreement sorted, they could get on and start winning that mineral. And if National Highways came along, that would be up to them to sort out. It wouldn't be delaying the road line. There's already contractual discussions between the applicant and National Highways on that aspect. So the other one, 9821, is for the infilling of the other voids. So that would take place in terms of the traffic reports, which we saw in there, at an increased tempo to get in before the road line starts. Once those phases are dropped, um, are completed, then the traffic numbers would drop down to more reduced um, features. And that, the two tables which we're winging to you today, which were omitted from the committee report or cut short, set out on table two at the back in red. The third one from the bottom, the reduced traffic numbers movement which are what is reported in the reporting way. The table is just there to assist. So in terms of um, infilling, it's in line with our policies. They reduce, they have a recycling plant on site, which is only a mobile plant. It's not a huge thing. A lot of sites have these mobile recycling plants. They will be allowed then to recycle a lot of the waste that comes in which would go off to replace virgin material. And the material that's not good enough, as you're well aware from our various sites, would be used to infill the voids. And they would propose then to retain that during the life of the site. So the report has gone through the traffic numbers onto that. They found them acceptable. Once they're onto the public highway, away they go. I've shown you that if the access roads go in under the new road scheme, there would be less of a disruption locally because they would have dedicated access straight onto the dual carriageway. And the, all the material would still be going out to the primary route. The little Bra uh, the Braxford Road route for secondary deliveries is already restricted to vehicle movement numbers anyway. And I don't think, just to quick with the applicant, they, they don't use the secondary route all that much, you know, on that. So the report has gone through all of those and found overall that the application, the three applications are acceptable. Uh, the, the recommendation subject to legal agreements and some more um, highway maintenance on the little slip of land between the primary access and the slip road for upgrading the maintenance of that road where it links in with national highways land ownership. That the report is acceptable and the conditions are set out. 
The addendum I just sent around, I thought I'd make, better make up an addendum, otherwise you would have something to complain about. But I've got a two-liner there for you guys, um, that is just to add in on your conditions. Would it be worthwhile just mentioning the sequencing then of the reports? Please do. Uh, so as they currently stand, in the recommendations we got here, as I said, the reports have all morphed into one. So the final one, 9821, in the sense, encapsulate what 51, the other variation from other permission, would have wanted for the Western Extension. So were the Western Extension and the first mother permission, 5121, approved? 98 is okay because the conditions reflect that. Were the Western Extension and the first mother permission refused? We couldn't actually be recommended in 98. We'd have to change the condition slightly afterwards because they're still referring to something which you guys have just refused. It's the way it's happened. It was a morph report. It's quite complicated, but I'm keeping it to one meeting so you can actually see what was developing. It was better than coming to you guys piecemeal, which is a concern of the locals that increment. <coughs> so, Chair, yeah, hopefully that's the report with the recommendation. Thank you. Thanks so much indeed, uh, Terry. Uh, before we go to the public speaker, it was very remiss of me not to welcome back Richard. As you see, he's been away for three months and uh, I hope your operation's gone well. And it's lovely to have you back on, uh, on my right. So well done. Thank you, Chairman. Good to see you back. Could I just say um, my own personal thanks to uh, officers, members of the team for holding the fort in my absence. They've done a, an excellent job. So thank you, Chairman. Thank you, officers. And the parties have stopped. They come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt. Well, Richard. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Terry. Uh, I will now call Mr. Bryce to come and address the committee. If you like to make your way. You've got three minutes, and when there's 30 seconds left, Emma will give you a prompt. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr Chairman, County Councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you with regard to the three planning applications at Coleman's Quarry. My name is Oliver Bryce. I'm the Managing Director of the applicant Bryce Aggregates Limited. The three applications before you today address various matters in relation to Coleman's Quarry, which, if approved, will deliver the following notable benefits. Firstly, an extension to the quarry, bringing forward a 265,000 tonne mineral reserve in support of the county's land bank whilst it sits about the seven-year threshold. These tonnes will otherwise be sterilised by the construction of the A12 widening scheme. Secondly, the delivery of approximately 1.1 million cubic metres of void space for the management of inert waste arisings, helping to meet the identified shortfall in such capacity within the county. Significant new capacity for CD&E waste recycling will also be delivered. Thirdly, an enhanced and improved restoration plan, which delivers increased biodiversity net gain, as well as the continued delivery of over 19 hectares of priority habitats. Fourthly, support for the continued employment of 25 personnel, as well as the creation of an expected 20 new roles, should these permissions be approved. <coughs> Fifth and finally, by restoring the relevant areas of the quarry to pre-extraction levels using inert waste, these applications will also support the timely delivery of the A12 widening scheme between Chelmsford and Marks Tay, and have been developed in collaboration with National Highways. And as you will see, their consultation response reflects the significance of these applications on the road scheme. Since the grant of the first planning consent in 2016, there have been a number of variations to planning, both to take account of changing circumstances on site and in relation to the emerging plans for the realignment of the A12. Bryce aggregates have been in active and regular dialogue with national highways with regards to this road scheme, which is currently being examined by the planning inspectorate. The proposals for the A12 scheme envisage the construction of a new off-route alignment in proximity to Whitman Rivenhall, which runs through the site. If approved, these applications will enable the working and restoration to pre-extraction levels of the affected areas of the quarry site ahead of the construction of the new A12. These areas are currently being worked and the resulting void will need to be filled by national highways using either Borrow Pit 1 or primary materials should we be unable to fill them ahead of the road construction. 
The grant of consent will enable both this council and Bryce Aggregates to support national highways by delivering the most sustainable and cost-effective means to build the A12 where it crosses the site. Notwithstanding the above, Bryce Aggregates believe that the applications can also be determined favourably on their own merits, as they continue to be fully compliant with planning policy and consistent with sustainable development objectives. 30 seconds. The date of cessation of operations of Commons Quarry will not be affected by these applications. <coughs> All the concerns that have been raised at the consultation stage can be addressed by appropriate mitigation measures, which are included in the planning conditions that are attached to the committee report. Your officers have made a balanced recommendation for approval, consistent with planning policy, which is supported by the applicant. If you have any questions, I will endeavour to provide you with answers. Thank you. Right, thanks so much indeed for um, your presentation. If you'd like to make your way back to the gallery, it'd be great. Thanks so much. Do we have any speakers? Councillor Jarvis first. Well, th th thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this site very well because I drive past every time I come into County Hall, but equally I declare a bit of an interest in that I was the Cabinet Member for Minerals and Waste when it was initially proposed. And the issue for me is the sterilisation of uh, very valuable aggregates. And I think we have a legal obligation that we, we shouldn't, under any circumstance, sterilise aggregate removal. I'm pretty certain that we are going to go ahead with the much needed rerouting of the A12. I mean, it's the road from hell. It really is. It's disastrous. <clears throat> and with the amount of hoo-ha that's going on further up and down the route, um, I have absolutely no doubt that it will go ahead unless there's a complete collapse in everything. So it's not unique. In fact, some of you might remember that we, I think it was Bull's Farm quarry when we put the bridge, the new bridge they're putting out there, 12. That again was an issue of sterilization of, of valuable sand and gravel. So th that is, I think, key to it. But equally, I think we have to take all three together because you can't really That's take right. one out and, and the, everything else collapses. Um, I was concerned about diverting Burry Brook, but of course, as Terry, as Mr. Burns has said, is that in the eventuality of the A12 being built, it's going to be culverted. So, you know, the scheme they put forward is actually they, they would do a temporary diversion and then put it back. But I think that that's going to be overtaken by events. And of course, infilling already happens. I mean, sand and quarry we've had and various other issues. So from my point of view, I think it's... It, an amazing report. I mean, it is basically another version of War and Peace, but you know, <laughs> um, more readable. More, yeah, more readable. But in, in many ways, uh, I, I recollect that we had problems when we first wrote access out, where there was a tree problem, I think. Um, this now gives a dedicated access onto the A12. And that's important because during my term involved with this, it was decreasing the number of lorry miles because it becomes just an uneconomic. I think 22 kilometres was, am I right? I think it was 20, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good memory from about 12 years ago. And making sure that they stick to main A routes rather than going off yeah. to country lanes. And this does it. In fact, going back even further, long before Carlo, and I think, I don't think even Terry would remember it, is that there was a proposal for a massive water sports complex on the lake. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this was going to be water skiing and jet skis and whatever. Um, I think this scheme, and uh, as it's gone forward over the years, actually is ecologically pretty good. Um, it's going to be very interesting when the Riven Hall Junction is, is, is put together because that will give a much easier access. Mm -hmm. It'll get rid of probably one of the worst at-grade junctions on the A12. It's lethal. It really is. Yeah. And uh, consequentially, it also means there's going to be much easier access onto the, onto the main routes. So I, I think that, uh, you know, I have absolutely no problems with this at all. And I will propose initially that we accept the recommendation of the officers. I can't really think there's anything they've left out at all. Um, if the road's going to go over it, why do we not take it out and actually then put in uh, industrial waste? You know, it's going to be sort of inert waste for infill. To me, it seems a logical, thoughtful and sensible proposal. And I have absolutely no problems with this at all. So, Chairman, I will propose, and I no doubt we will hear 
pro and con, but I, I'll put forward the recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. For the avoidance of that, so you're proposing all three? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Stepto. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'm happy to uh, second Councillor Jell's um, proposal there. Uh, just one small one. Oh, I disagree with him on. The road from hell is the A127. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not second second that. We'll go <laughs> <laughs> You've got Mr Bradley here you can have a conversation with, if you like. <laughs> Thank you for uh, uh, your um, seconding the um, proposal. Do I have any other speakers, members? Sorry. Councillor Thurigand. I, um, I forgot to mention, I'm, I'm a district councillor for Braintree. So, are you declaring an interest right. in the fact that you are? Yeah, well, <coughs> I have objected at, an, at early stages to the A12 as well. That's fair enough. Okay. So, I just should take some advice on that. Well, as this is seems fairly inextricably linked to the A12, I think there is a possible perception of potential bias. Right. So I should leave. Is, is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I, bear in mind the point of the meeting we're at. I think if you sit in the public gallery. Yeah. We're almost at. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Thurgood, for pointing that out. Do I have any other speakers, members? Okay, well, um, Councillor Balfour. Sorry, Chairman. I just, I just, I'm not objecting to it at all. I just want to mention I know um, Mr. Greaves has thanked his team, but I just want to personally thank Terry. Um, for what an excellent report. For somebody who's a fairly newbie to this, really, I understand every single thing in that report, and I think it's thanks to him, the way that he's wrote it, that makes it easier for us to understand it. Like, you mentioned War and Peace, and this is obviously a lot easier readable, but <laughs> it actually explains it in, in detail, and I think he's to be congratulated on writing an excellent report on what is actually something quite complicated, really. He's actually made it look quite easy. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I think we all agree on that. Chairman, could I second that? Because I don't get the opportunity to read these reports. Right. So understanding the issue is very important to me to make a decision. Yeah. And reading that through from our, from Kerry was brilliant. Thank you. Just thank you, Aspinall. Uh, just for the uh, to explain that you have some impairment about reading and you have a, a, a professional reader that relates the report to you on a normal basis, don't you? No. <laughs> so, would you like to enlarge on how the report is conveyed to you? Oh, only by, by my PA. Your PA, that's, that's, so you have someone that reads oh, it to you, yeah. yeah. If, you, if that's classed as a yeah, yeah. professional reader, yeah. But I would not subject her to this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would get sacked. <laughs> but maybe if you like to bring her along, she can meet her in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Harris. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it is a, a very comprehensive report, as has already been said, so I'm supporting Councillor Jowers' um, uh, proposal and the seconder. A um, couple of questions, really. The the time scale, you mentioned July for the um, Secretary of State decision, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that won't slip. I mean, I'm assuming the, the money may or may not come with that and the, with the... With the, but it's notwithstanding the fact, even if it doesn't go ahead, you've covered that bit in the report, haven't you? That's covered as well. Yeah. So, um, so yes, on that, because, yeah, uh, the closure of the examination is July. So obviously, when the inspector then has to sit down and do their report, that could be sometime towards the end of the year. Yeah. It's just I, I was initially concerned. I've read this three times. Once in bed, but uh, that's not the truth. But we, it was just to make sure that we covered we covered off when that was happening in case there's any slippage. You know, we all know the cost of living and what's happening and whether there's money for these projects or whether there's not or whether it's put on the back burner for a year or two. It still happens to be, as Councillor Jarvis said, you can't let that chance to do what needs to be done under there pass by. Otherwise, it would sterilise it forever and and then you had it. Um, the second question I had really is more detail, and, and I'm sure uh, the integrity and, and uh, the, the, they'll do the best they can with the, but the rules 
for diverting water, the water course, the brook you're talking about, will that be done in a in a coordinated, sensitive way, as per the rules that you have? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, it will be put, you'll do an assessment of wildlife, uh, you know, fauna, uh, flora around there, and then that will be restored as much as possible after the event. Is that the sort of thing we'd have? Any, anything furry on the site, we just flatten it, and then we, we, we'll get to stay wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's just like most uh, any other site for diversions or channels. This is bread and butter on sites. <laughs> they will do the appropriate assessments, any translocations, and then divert. Yes. Well, I've already said I'm supporting Joe anyway, so it's just a good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much indeed. I don't see any other uh, members indicate to speak, so I shall go to the vote. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, we are voting on all three uh, applications uh, and taking into consideration the, uh, um, the shortest ever addendum in the world. So that's <laughs> uh, all those in favour, please show. <laughs> Uh, I think it's uh, unanimous, members. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Bryce will now get cracking and uh, uh, get spade in the ground and uh, all that. So much indeed. Uh, we now go to agenda item uh, five, which is information items. The first one is on the periodic review of mineral uh, permissions, and the second is on enforcement. So it's a good time for me to introduce, uh, before I go to uh, Ms. Tomlin, Sean, Sean Long is a new enforcement officer. Welcome. Uh, you have a, a very uh, esteemed background as you've been with the Environment Agency in your previous life. So you are absolutely 100% fully qualified to take on the job. The only comment I have, as I said to you the other day, you've got some very large boots, Phil, yeah. uh, left behind by uh, yeah. our previous two <laughs> excellent enforcement officers. George has actually gone, gone to work for the EA. And, uh, and of course, Susanna, which uh, is still helping us out every now and again in the background. So welcome to the team. And we'll come to you when you present your report after Claire. So Claire. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, this is a, a short report about a review of old mineral planning permissions. The Mineral Planning Authority has a responsibility to look at old planning permissions that are 15 years old, and we look one year in advance because we have to make sure that we give any operator one year's notice of any review that's required. Um, and the, the idea is to look at old planning, mineral planning permissions to see if any of them do need updated conditions. So we go through all the condition, permissions that have in, uh, issued that are coming up for 15 years old, uh, and then we identify whether any of those actually do need review. Uh, some of the sites will have been finished, some of them um, will have had um, uh, applications sub to, subsequent to the, the original application, so they've got a later date as it happens anyway, or in some of them, the, the instance, the, the, the conditions are adequate and there's no need to review them. In relation to the permissions that we've identified for this this, this uh, period of 15 months, there's only one planning permission that's really been identified that might need review, which is at Barling. Um, there is a, an existing planning permission at the site, an existing planning application that's outstanding at the moment, which, if approved, would actually resolve um, the the need for a review of uh, a review of the planning permission. And so, what we've suggested on that particular application is rather than seeking a review now, uh, that we postpone it for five years, which we are entitled to do under the legislation and that we consider whether there's a need for review in five years time which by hopefully by then the current planning application will have been determined and actually by the way will have been restored completely um, so that that's what's set out in the report thank you very much indeed claire any questions for claire on that no chairman just to say that no i'd be happy to set that Thank you so much indeed. Uh, okay, the um, report is noted. Um, before I go to uh, Mr. Long, I understand you need to leave very shortly because you've got you got to see a man about a tree or something. Aren't you? So. <laughs> <laughs> I go into the tree. Oh, I'm going to do it I think uh, Councillor Stepto has got all of course service to go yeah, to. I'm on uh, civic duties this afternoon, sir. So feel free to leave whenever uh, is yeah, the right time. Okay, we we'll go to Sean. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to thank you, first of all, for welcoming me to my first committee. Um, obviously, you've seen the enforcement update, hopefully, uh, with the summary of the current cases. Uh, other than what's been presented at the current, there is no further updates. Um, obviously, if you do have questions, then we welcome them. I know that the uh, uh, number of live cases have dropped from the 30s down to 28, so uh, if you'd like to take the credit for that, if, if, please feel free. Members, do you have any questions relating to any other contents? Councillor Aspinall. Thank you, uh, and welcome, Sean. 
Um, I was working very closely with George on several issues in my division in Pilgrim's Hatch, Brentwood. Um, unfortunately, I've had no response from the council since then, so please send me your email and I'll make you my best friend. <laughs> Point taken, I think. Yeah, that's all Thanks so much indeed. Uh, any further comments on the enforcement update? Just, Chairman, on um, Straits Mill Bocking, good to see that we've got um, court action being taken on that site. Sure. Yes, uh, the, I think uh, I've had to, some communication today. Uh, I'm meeting with legal next week, um, and obviously further updates will follow. Yeah, thank you. Can you keep me posted? It's my division. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Lovely. Thanks so much indeed. Uh, thank you. Sure, for your presentation, and uh, 5.3 is stats which relate to the uh, two periods, November and December. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, enforcement have dropped down from to 28 from the 30s, and still 100% or minus a major, so well down to the team. I see they do function without you, Richard. That's uh, <laughs> quite the issue, isn't it? I am pointless, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much indeed. Uh, the date of next meeting is uh, uh, on the 24th of February, um, which is always the last fourth Friday of the month. Uh, seven and eight urgent business and urgent exempt business have none. Members are thankful.